Hello, my name is John Broadwell, and I'm a medical device and embedded systems consultant at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated, and the creator of the Serial Wombat open source project. Today, we're going to be looking at how to use the Serial Wombat 18AB in order to interface one or more TM1637 seven-segment LCD LED displays. Uh, these are readily available on uh, electronics flea market sites and through Amazon. Uh, they're really easy devices to use. They only take power, clock, uh, data, and ground, so a four-wire connection. Uh, the only downside to these is that you have to clock out individual bits one at a time, and they're not strictly compatible with SPI or I2C, so you have to have something that's a little bit custom. Uh, one of the complaints that I see about some of the existing Arduino libraries is that if you use them along with the Arduino uh, interrupts, that they can flicker or take up more computing time than what you like. So they seem like an ideal peripheral to offload to the Serial Wombat chip and its additional uh, I.O. and processing capacity that it adds to your Arduino or other single board computer project. So uh, let's get started. But before we do that, please make sure that you have the most recent downloaded Arduino library and that you've upgraded the firmware in your Serial Wombat uh, 18AB chip to the latest firmware. The process for doing both of these things is available in the Serial Wombat AB Getting Started video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to simply hook up a display and show 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that assumes we have a six character display. Typically these displays come in either four or six characters. You'd think this would be straightforward, but we're going to find out. As it turns out, it isn't always. So let's take a look real quick at circuit that we're going to be using. Here we can see our circuit. It's pretty standard. Uh, today we'll be interfacing with a Cduino Xiao uh, Arduino board. Uh, we've got our Serial Wombat 18AB chip, and we have connected via I2C to the Cduino. Uh, we've got pull-up resistors on clock-in data. We've got our 10K resistor to the reset pin. Our address pin has no connection, so we'll be using the default uh, Serial I2C address of 6B. We've got our bypass caps on power in both of the power inputs and we've got our necessary 10 microfarad capacitor for the core uh, capacitor voltage. We have four TM1637 LED displays. I got this six segment and that six segment from Amazon and these two are from AliExpress. Uh, we'll be using this one most commonly. It's six characters and the most commonly uh, I'm going to start by connecting power, ground, and clock and data to the first display that we're going to be using. We'll be using pin 19 as our clock and pin 18 as our data. So this sketch is pretty straightforward. We're going to declare a Serial Wombat chip and a Serial Wombat TM1637. And my, uh, uh, looks like I need to update the keywords for my Arduino library to get these to show up in orange. I'll take care of that after I finish this video. Uh, and we're going to declare a display. We're going to tell it, hey, the clock, we'll use these pound defines in initialization later. The clock is on 19, the data in is on 18. Let's initialize the I squared C. Let's initialize the serial and let's wait 500 milliseconds, make sure those are okay. Then this is a new, relatively new uh, method for the Serial Wombat class, find. It will look for the first Serial Wombat chip that it finds and return the I squared C address. Uh, that's useful for these kind of easy demos because then it doesn't really matter for these examples how you have it configured or in the case of the Serial Wombat, uh, 4B, which are the chips that you picked. So if it doesn't find one, it'll show an error and give you some suggestions. That's on another tab. We won't go into that now. So let's start up the Serial Wombat chip. We'll tell it the wire, the I squared C address. And for my own debugging purposes, I tell it don't do a reset. You can leave that off if you want. 
we're going to declare the display telling it we're using pins and we should be using our pound defines for that. The final version of this will be available in your uh, examples directory under the Serial Wombat uh, library, the Arduino library. We're going to tell it we're using six digits. That's an optimization. If for short ones, if you're only using the first three, you can save some CPU time on the Serial Wombat chip. Uh, we're going to be using character array, which basically says, hey, we're going to dump a string out and display that string on the display and brightness four, you can pick values from zero for dimmest. That does not mean off. It means dim up to seven, which is the brightest, but because of the nature of LEDs and PWMs, honestly, anything over four looks about the same. It just pulls more current in my experience. The right digit order allows you to change the order of the digits. We'll get to that in a little bit as to why you might want something like that. Uh, in this case, we're not going to have any loop. We're just going to go straight through the uh, through the the initialization, and that'll be it. So let's load this guy up and see what happens. And the result is pretty straightforward. We get zero, one, two, three, four, five on the display, which is exactly what we expect. Let's try again with the DIY more display that I got from Amazon. And let's power that up and see what happens. Yeah, that's weird. 210543. So I have a couple of guesses as to what may have happened here. Uh, one possible explanation is that this hardware engineer has a deep-seated hatred for software people and as a passive-aggressive move decided to wire the the uh, seven segments in a different order, thereby making your software more complicated. More likely, though, the person who did this wasn't thinking about software when they did it and just routed the traces underneath from the uh, LED pins to the uh, TM1637 chip in a manner which required the least possible uh, vias and the easiest routing. Whatever the case is, though, uh, we need to make an adjustment in order to make this work. So remember those numbers, 210543. This is what the right display order is for. Essentially, if you run the 012345 test and they come out in the wrong order, simply put the numbers in as parameters in the order that they come out. 210543. And what this will do is at the Serial Wombat firmware level inside of the chip, as it renders the various seven segment segments that should be on or off to display a particular character or animation or whatever, the very last step that it does is it will reorder the, the bytes that it sends out before they go to the TM1637, and that will correct this error. So let's upload this sketch now and see what happens. And we can see that the display 012345 is now displaying in the proper order after we make that uh, display order correction in the Arduino library slash Serial Wombat firmware. So this is the end of the first example. Now we're going to build on this and look at some others. Okay, now let's try going back and doing a four-digit display. So we're going to put this back. And we'll upload that again. The output again and there we go zero one two three now there is a theoretical five six right here that we're not seeing and in some cases it may be desirable to see the last four digits instead of the first four digits such as when you're displaying an internal value from the serial wombat chip in decimal or hex modes so let's adjust our sketch real quick to do that so what we're going to do here is just make a quick adjustment and make this two, three, four, five to display the last four digits on the first part of the display. And then the part that we don't see will display on the digits that don't exist. The, the most significant digits will move to the far right. So now let's do a quick update on that and see what happens. 
and we can see the desired effect that we're getting the 2, 3, 4, 5 with an implied 0, 1 over here on the left. Now let's take a look at another sketch. Now we're going to take a look at another example. This one pulls data directly from the public data of the serial wombat, either from a pin or from one of the other sources. So pretty much the same initialization, except we're going to pick a different mode this time. Instead of string mode, we're either going to pick hex or decimal. So for starters, since we're using the four digit display, let's pick decimal and a data source. Uh, I'm going to pick right now the data source incrementing number. And do we want to suppress leading zeros? Uh, let's say true on that one. You could say either true or false. That looks good. And since we're using the four digit display, let's put the same trick we showed in the previous example in here. So that we get the least significant four digits. Let's do a quick upload on that and see how it goes. And here we can see it's incrementing using one of the Serial Wombat's internal data sources, a simple incrementing number. We can see that the leading zero is missing, and that will show up here in a second when the next digit uh, moves forward. You can also turn that off if you like. So, and it'll keep going like this. So let's take a look and switch it over to hex mode. We'll go up here and just comment out the mode that we're using and comment it in. And note that these pound defines don't actually drive anything in the compilation. We're just making this a convenient place to configure the sketch and that that same value is used right here. You could put this enumeration that we're using directly into the call if you wanted. So let's do an upload there. And we can see now it looks like it's roughly the same thing, but we know it's like we see it cycles through A, B, C, D, E, and F. So it is now counting in hex rather than in decimal. This is useful because it allows you to express an entire 16 bit uh, integer, which is the public data format of the Serial Wombat firmware uh, on a single four digit display. Let's change now and just for fun, show how the Serial Wombat data pins can share data with one another. So we will take and add a simple potentiometer. And we're going to tie that pot into pin one, which is an analog pin. I'm sorry, pin zero, which is also an analog pin. And now let's make a quick modification to our sketch. We can see here when we did our declarations, we declared a serial wombat analog input for a potentiometer, which then we come down here and we initialize on pin zero, 64 samples uh, average. There's another video you can watch on how to use the serial wombat 18AB uh, analog inputs. But the important thing is we're going to come up here and instead of getting our data source from that incrementing number source, we're going to say the serial wombat source pin zero is the source for the 16 bit value that we're going to display. So now let's do an upload on that. And we see instead of counting in decimal, now we're getting a value that is FF and some change. We're getting a little bit of noise in there on the last little bit of the the A to D converter. But you can see essentially if I turn this pot left to right, we're approaching ground now and the number on the display goes down. This could be useful for debugging or other, other purposes uh, where you want to see what's going on within the serial Wombat chip. And it's a nice demonstration of how the cross pin public data uh, accessing can work. Next, let's go back to our six segment display and take a look at decimal points. We can see here the decimal sketch and 
what this is going to do is essentially uh, use the write decimal bitmap. We're going to use the string mode to just write spaces into that. That'll turn off all of the, the number digits. And then we're going to write the decimals and we're going to delay a quarter of a second that we'll move to the next one. And essentially, this is a bitmap with the 0x01 bit being the leftmost decimal, the uh, 0x40 bit being the rightmost decimal, assuming it's wired in a standard fashion. And so what this sketch will do is simply count in binary by lighting and not lighting the decimals. So let's upload that now and see what we get. And here we see it doing what we expect. Essentially, the decimal points are counting in binary. So you can turn on any combination of the decimal points that you like or turn them off. Decimal point processing happens after all other processing except for digit reordering. And so you have the ability to turn them on in any of the modes, including animation mode that you like might like. Um, Next, let's take a look at doing some animations. So animations are essentially where we load multiple different bitmaps that are to be displayed on the seven segments into the Serial Wombat chip and then say, hey, Serial Wombat chip, I want you to clock these, uh, these displays out at a certain order. I'm sorry, at a certain speed. And so again, there's a number of different options that you can pick here. We've got a six segment display hooked up. And so let's say, hey, we're gonna do a six segment display. We'll run it at medium speed. And the way that this particular sketch works is I created some pound defines that say which bit corresponds to which uh, segment on a seven segment. Uh, a couple of these are combinations if we want a vertical line on the right or the left or the top, middle or bottom. That makes it easier to understand. And essentially just created these arrays. And I can actually remove that, that's unnecessary. The compiler will count that out for us. So we have a six digit display that basically makes one bit snake around the display. There's 28 entries in this. So this sketch is similar to many of the others. We find our serial wombat chip. Uh, we start our I squared C and initialize it. Then we initialize the display. In this case, we're picking animation. Uh, it doesn't matter which source pin we use on this one because it's not used in animation. Again, we'll configure the digit order if necessary. And then we're going to write the animation. We have to tell it where in the Serial Wombat chips user buffer, which is a large uh, 8K array of RAM, where you want to store the animation. Uh, I'll have another video on using the user buffer. Uh, how fast, and again, that just goes to which of the uh, values we picked here. Essentially, what you're putting in there is how many milliseconds after loading a new frame should you wait before loading a new one. Uh, the size of the number of frames, which since these are uh, six bytes per frame, is going to be the size of the animation array divided by six. I'd recommend using this macro. And then what array to load, again, that's going to be an array of uh, bytes, essentially a two-dimensional array. And in this case, I created a pound defined for you guys so that you could pick between different displays. Let's load this up and see what happens. And here we can see the animation running. Essentially, we just got one line that's snaking its way all the way back and forth across these six digits. There's a similar uh, example in there for four digits, to, if you like, and another array that just makes a vertical line go across the screen that might be useful for some kind of a status indicator or something like that. For our final uh, example with the TM1637, we're going to do a simple UI using the flash uh, function, which allows you to pick one or more digits that flash with about a 75% duty cycle uh, to indicate the equivalent of a cursor. With this, we're going to be using a couple of touch sensors made out of a penny and a quarter is our user interface aspects and the same TM1637 display as an output. 
there's a, another video on how to set up, configure, use the 18, the Serial Wombat 18 Cap Touch and the Serial Wombat 18 Cap Touch counter class that will be doing our user interface. So we're going to have an, uh, a variable digit change that from one iteration to another checks the user interface, the, uh, the, the coins that we're going to touch to see how much change, if any, we should put on the value that we're displaying. The display string is going to be six characters long. We'll make it seven so it can fit a zero, uh, a null character at the end just for string processing. The current digit is the digit or location in the display that we're changing. Uh, 0 to 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6 means none. Essentially, no digit should be flashing. We'll initialize the I squared C and the serial as before. We've got the new item that initializes a penny and a quarter as touch items on pins 16 and 17. Uh, we're going to make the pennies digital based on calibration constants that we found in those other uh, videos that I referred you to. And then we're going to set up a counter on the quarter that essentially allows a variable to be automatically updated by a certain amount that speeds up the longer you hold it. For the display, it's going to be very simple. We're using the character display just as before. Again, set up your right order if you want. For this one, let's go ahead and do the 210. five, four, three, because we'll use that nice looking, but slightly goofy uh, display that I got on Amazon. And we will write out our array, which is initialized to zero, zero, zero. Then we'll go into our loop. In our loop, we're going to uh, make the display do something interesting. Uh, we will take a look at the penny. And if someone has pressed the penny, then we'll move on to the next digit and we'll create a function that we call every time we want to move to the next digit. We'll call the quarter counter update, which essentially just makes the real time stuff happen. Again, see the other uh, video. And if our current digit is zero through five, and if the update caused that digit to change, then let's go ahead and change one of the points in this string that corresponds to the current digit that we've selected. Uh, essentially, we'll add the change. If it's greater than a lowercase z, which is an ASCII value, then we'll set it back to space, which is near the bottom of the ASCII range. If it's less than space, uh, we'll set it back to z, which we're treating as the last character we want to deal with. We'll set the change back to zero, and this, we modified the string, so let's write it to the display. For any time that we detect it's time to move on to the next digit, essentially moving the cursor to the right, uh, we'll again set digit change to zero. We'll update the current digit. If it's greater than six, set it back to the beginning. If our digit is set to zero, one, two, three, or five, four or five, those are actual digits, then we'll make that particular digit blink by setting the proper bit in the bitmap. If it's six, then that means we're not selecting any digit right now. We're done and none of the digits will blank. And if something goofy happens where we get a value we shouldn't, then we'll also shut off blinking. So it's a pretty straightforward sketch. I think it's really a, you know, it looks kind of long because I break the stuff down on different lines so that it's easy to read. There's some comments in there, a lot of white space to try to separate it and make it readable. This could have been simplified down to an if statement. So when you look at the number of, uh, actual code lines of code versus the amount of user interface action we're going to get when we upload this thing. I think it's pretty efficient and speaks pretty well to the, you know, to the capabilities of the serial Wombat firmware libraries and the way that, you know, they're designed to really do the sort of things that you'd want to do in real projects. So now let's upload the sketch. So we can see now the sketch is loaded. Our default value of all zeros shows up. Let's, uh, let's show the word serial, S-E-R-I-A-L on the display. So I'll push the button once and we see, okay, the first digit is flashing. I'll hold down on the quarter and it starts incrementing. I, J, K, H, L, M, N, O, P, Q, 
RS. And then we'll move on to the next digit. B, C, D, E. Move on to the next digit. You know, it's pretty far. I can hold it down for a bit. L, M, N, O, P, Q, R. Next digit. I'm not pushing that hard enough. There we go. Two, three, four, five, six. H I just the hard one. A is a lot of the weird characters right before A. Last character L. K L. So there we have it, the word serial up on our display, and we were able to enter that relatively easily. Certainly, I wouldn't want to, you know, write a novel that way. But, uh, you know, I've certainly used commercial uh, systems that were at least that onerous to use. And I was able to add that using only 26 cents worth of additional parts and, uh, and a very minimal amount of code. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, then hit the like button. That's what it's for. Uh, if you're a fan of the Serial Wombat or your current chip and you're currently using it, I definitely recommend subscribing. This YouTube channel is how I best push new information out to existing users. I don't do email lists or anything like that. Uh, this particular video is produced prior to the release of the Serial Wombat 18AB chip. Uh, so it's possible that in the future things will change. YouTube's eliminated the ability to add annotations during the video. So take a look in the text below to see if there's any important notes or things that you should know that aren't covered in this video. Uh, you know, if you're using the uh, TM1637 for an application, or if you found an interesting display that doesn't work well with the library or that you need some help with, then, you know, leave me a comment below. I always love to hear what people are up to and what they're doing. So, you know, again, I hope you have a lot of fun with this and I'll see you in the next video. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and it's constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features to the Serial Wombat. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485 as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below. Questions sent to John at Broadwell Consulting about the Serial Wombat will not be returned.